What if I told you there's a way to get a small language model、hmm. to outperform one that's hundreds of times bigger? We're diving deep into this new research、yeah. on test time scaling to see if size really matters. That's a great question. When it comes to these powerful AI systems, you know this research paper: Can one B LLM surpass four hundred five B LLM?、Mm -hmm. It really challenges that assumption that bigger is always better. Right. When it comes to AI, and it explores how these smaller models. Okay. Can achieve incredible reasoning feats using this strategy called test time scaling. So break it down for me. What exactly is test time scaling (TTS)? Well, think of it this way: you're giving your language model extra time to think during an exam, instead of just making these models bigger and bigger. Oh, okay. TTS strategically creates additional computational power during what we call the thinking phase. So it's not about the sheer size. Right. It's about how it uses its resources when it's solving problems. Exactly, and the implications are huge. This could potentially make powerful AI capabilities available. Yeah. On devices that don't have as much processing power. That's fascinating. So making it more accessible. Yes, democratizing access to this cutting-edge tech. Now the paper digs into two main categories of TTS. Internal TTS, where the model is trained to think slow,、mm -hmm. and external TTS, which is about sampling or searching for the best solution. Yeah. What's the difference? So with internal TTS, the model is trained to deliberate over each step, similar to how okay we as humans might break down a complex problem into smaller parts. External TTS. Got it. That involve exploring multiple solutions and selecting the best one. Okay, so like trying different routes. Yeah, like finding the fastest way to get somewhere. Makes sense. So internals methodical, externals more exploratory. Precisely, and a key challenge, particularly with that external TTS,、yeah. is figuring out the optimal way to use that extra computational power. It's not a one size fits all,、right. you know, approach. This research really delves into how factors. Mm -hmm. Like policy models, process reward models,、okay. and even the difficulty of the task itself,、yeah. all play a critical role in determining the most effective TTS strategy. Let's break down these factors a bit. What exactly are policy models and process reward models? Okay, so policy models. And how do they influence TTS? They are essentially the language models that generate solutions, like students taking a test. Okay. They're responsible for coming up with different answers. Got it. So the policy models are the students. Yes. And then are the process reward models like the teachers? That's a great analogy. Process reward models, or we call them PRMs. Okay. Evaluate the quality of each step in、mm. the reasoning process. They act as guides, providing feedback on how well that policy model is doing. Okay. And sort of steering it towards more promising solutions. I like that analogy. So we have the students, the policy models, right, trying to. Problems and we've got the teachers, the PRMs,、yeah. giving them grades and feedback. Exactly. But then, how does the difficulty of the task affect all of this? Well, because not all problems are created equal. Right. Some require more steps and more complex reasoning than others. Yeah, for sure. And the researchers argue that current TTS methods don't fully account for how that difficulty of the task,、mm -hmm. in conjunction with the policy model and the PRM,、yeah. impacts the effectiveness of the scaling strategy. So it's a pretty intricate dance between all of these elements. It is. How do the researchers actually test these ideas out, and what kind of language models? So they used a variety. Of Do they use of well-known language models, including Llama, GPT-40, okay, Quen, and DeepSeek R1? They range in size from a few billion to hundreds of billions of parameters. Wow! And to evaluate their reasoning abilities, these models were put to the test. Okay. On some challenging math datasets like Math 500,、mm. and this one called AIM 24, which contains problems designed to stump、oh, wow. even seasoned mathematicians. Okay, so we've got a lineup of AI heavyweights here. We do competing on some really tough problems. Yeah. Did those smaller models using TTS actually manage to pull off any upsets? So the papers is filled with examples of smaller models using TTS. Oh, really? Outperforming much larger ones, even on those incredibly challenging datasets. Wow. In some cases, a model 135 times smaller achieved better results. That's incredible. Than a giant 405B model. So it really highlights the potential of TTS to level the playing field. That really makes you wonder if we've been too focused on just scaling up model size. And that's one of the key takeaways from this research. It suggests that strategically using that computational power、right. during inference might be a more effective way to unlock those advanced reasoning abilities. Yeah. Especially in those smaller, more accessible models. This is all incredibly fascinating. But let's dive into how these different TTS strategies work. Okay. Specifically, 
the paper mentions things like best event, beam search, mm -hmm. and diverse verified tree search. Can you break those down a little bit? What does each one involve? Okay, best of N or born is the simplest approach. It's like giving the model right. multiple attempts at a problem and picking the best answer. So kind of like a multiple choice test. Yes, exactly. Okay. Now, beam search is a bit more sophisticated. Okay. It explores a set of promising solution paths, step by step. Yeah. Think of it like navigating a maze. At each intersection, the model chooses the paths. Okay. Most likely to lead to the exit, discarding the less promising options. So it's focusing on the ones that seem most likely to succeed. Exactly. And then we have diverse verifier tree search. Okay. How's that different? Or DVTS takes the concept of beam search and expands on it. Hmm. Instead of exploring just one set of promising paths, okay. it divides the search into multiple subtrees, each explored independently. So it's like having multiple teams exploring the maze at the same time? Yes, exactly. Increasing the chances of finding the best solution. Okay. And how do these methods actually use the process reward models? So the PRMs... The teachers. Yes. They play a crucial role in guiding that search process. They evaluate the quality of each step along the way. Okay. Assigning rewards to those deemed more likely to lead to the correct solution. So higher reward, more promising the path? Exactly. But are there any downsides to using PRMs? Any catches? So there is a catch. The researchers uncovered some issues with PRMs. I hope uh... That could potentially impact the effectiveness of TTS. Okay. It turns out that some PRMs exhibit biases, such as favoring shorter responses. Oh, wow. So they're not perfect. Right. It's interesting because it's like having a judge in a competition yeah. who subconsciously favors contestants with certain characteristics. Exactly. And those biases can have a significant impact on the effectiveness of TTS. Right. Because if a PRM consistently rewards the wrong kind of reasoning steps, it can lead the language model astray. This raises some questions about the reliability of these PRMs. Yeah. How do we make sure that they're actually being fair? And that's one of the key challenges researchers are currently grappling with, right. exploring various techniques to make PRMs more accurate okay, and less biased, such as training them on more diverse data sets. Yeah, that makes sense. Or using more sophisticated algorithms to evaluate reasoning steps. So lots of work to be done. Lots of work to be done. This is all incredibly insightful, but I'm curious, how does TTS stack against other state-of-the-art methods? So there are a number... For improving reasoning in LLMs. Are there other contenders? Of other impressive approaches out there, each with their own unique strengths and weaknesses. Okay. We have things like RStarMat, Eurus2, Similarel, and Satori. Wow. Those are... Which employ strategies... Quite a mouthful. Like reinforcement learning and self-reflection. Okay. And the paper suggests that TTS, particularly when it's optimized for computational efficiency, can be more effective than some of these methods, especially on those challenging math problems. So TTS is holding its own. Yes. It is. But is it the ultimate champion of LLM reasoning? Not quite. There's another formidable contender in the ring. Mm -hmm. uh, distillation. Distillation. This involves training a smaller model to mimic the behavior of a much larger, more powerful one. And in some cases, TTS with a 7B model actually lost Oh wow! to a model distilled from a massive 671B model, Okay. especially on that exceptionally challenging AIM24 data set. So it's not a complete knockout for TTS. No. Discalation still has some tricks up its sleeve. It this whole comparison makes me wonder if using TTS with smaller models could help us. It's a great question. Reduce our reliance on those massive energy-hungry models. And that question that's causing quite a stir in the AI community. Yeah. While those massive models have certainly driven significant progress. Yeah. This research suggests that solely focusing on size might be reaching a point of diminishing returns. So it's not just about brute force anymore. Exactly. It's about strategy and making the most of every computational resource. And finesse. It's like a shift in warfare from those massive armies clashing mm. to smaller, more agile units that use sophisticated tactics. Yeah, brilliant analogy. To gain an advantage. And this shift in thinking could have profound implications. Yeah. For the future of AI development, we might see a move towards more specialized models, okay. each optimized for specific tasks, using techniques like TTS. Instead of one giant AI, we might have a diverse ecosystem. Yes. Of smaller, more efficient AIs. Right. Oh, wait. Someone wants to join. Hey, hey go, for go for it. Hey there. Thank you for explanation. Can you remind me what's the difference between the policy models and the PRMs?
Of course, I'm happy to clarify that for you. Yeah, no problem at all. So policy models are essentially the language models that are trying to solve a problem. Right, they're like the students taking the test. Exactly, and they're responsible for generating the actual solutions or the reasoning steps. Okay, they're the ones actually trying to answer the questions. Yes. Now, process reward models or PRMs are different. Okay, so like the teachers. They evaluate the quality of the solutions the policy model comes up with. Okay, so they don't solve the problems. Right, they grade the work of the policy models. They give feedback and guide the policy model to more promising solutions. Exactly, so the policy models are generating and the PRMs are evaluating. I hope that helps clear it up for you. Okay, now let's get back to our deep dive. Right. We are just about to explore some of the challenges the researchers uncovered with PRMs. Yes, and we were talking about how these models can have biases, which is a big problem. It is because the PRMs act as judges in the TTS process. If they are biased, it can affect the whole system. Yeah, and that's why scientists are working on making them more accurate. By training them on diverse data sets and using sophisticated algorithms. Yes, and it's not just about bias. There's also the cost of using these models. Right, because PRMs are often large models themselves. They're also computationally expensive. This is why researchers are looking for smaller, more efficient PRMs. So it's all about finding a balance between accuracy and efficiency. Precisely. And as PRM tech evolves, we'll see even more cool TTS stuff come out. I'm really excited to see what happens next. It's a fast moving field. Me too. And it's all really changing how we think about AI development. It is shifting away from just making things bigger to making them smarter. Yes. And that brings us to the broader implications of all of this research. Yeah, how this might change the world of AI as a whole. Absolutely. This paper challenges the idea that bigger is always better in AI. It really makes us think about how we use computation. And suggests that optimizing computation during the thinking process is... So that means squeezing more performance from smaller models. Exactly. It's like fine-tuning a car to get better gas mileage. Right. And this has huge implications for making AI more accessible. It does. Think about running AI on smartphones or other devices. Which would really democratize access to this tech. Yes. And it also means that we could make AI more sustainable. Right. By reducing the need for massive energy-hungry models. All of this research points to a future where AI is more efficient. And more accessible. And where do you see all of this going in the future? Well, it could really transform daily life, you know? Absolutely, from personalized AI assistance to improved healthcare. It has the potential to democratize intelligence, as you said. By giving more people access to AI tools. It could also speed up progress in science and medicine. It's really exciting to think about the possibilities of the whole picture. It is. It's all pushing us towards a more beneficial future. Where AI is not just smart, but also more sustainable and accessible. Exactly. And that future isn't set in stone. We all need to work together. By supporting research, promoting ethics, and collaborating with everyone. It's all part of creating this future where AI benefits all of us. It's been a truly illuminating deep dive into this research. It has. I've really enjoyed sharing these ideas with you. And I want to thank you for your insights and expertise. My pleasure. And to our listener, we thank you for your curiosity. Yes, thank you for being here and asking all the great questions. And remember, the future is full of exciting possibilities. And AI will definitely play a huge part in shaping that future. So let's all work together towards that goal with all of these fascinating ideas in mind. Absolutely. Until next time, keep learning and keep imagining the possibilities. Well said.